So moving right along, I want to take a few minutes and talk about control structures in Groovy. Control structures are a basic feature of any programming language. A control, a control structure is basically a block of programming that analyzes some variables and then chooses a direction in which to go based on some given parameters. In this demo, we're going to just take a few minutes to talk about some of the basic control structures in Groovy. We're actually going to talk more in depth about these later in this course, but for right now, I just want to kind of introduce you to them so that when you see them, you know what's happening. So I just opened up a new file in the Groovy console here, and we're just going to start to go through uh, a few examples of control structures. So the first one I want to cover is the if statement. So we're going to use the if keyword and then in parentheses we want something to evaluate to true. In this case I'm just going to use the literal true. And if, if that's true we're going to take some action. Um, in this case we're just going to print out um, a line here with some text that says value is true. So now if we go ahead and run that, uh, you're going to see the line print out value is true. And that's because what is in the express in the parentheses there does evaluate to true. Um, and so let's kind of take let's take this a little bit further. So let's say we want to look at false, null, empty strings, and empty collections. So now if we were to run this and say if false um, print line value is false, right? So that should work, right? So if we go ahead and just run that, nothing happens. And what's going on here is because the value in the parentheses didn't evaluate to true, we're not taking the action of executing the next line of code. So there is something called an if else, which we'll get into. So you can say if true, do this, if false, do that. But in this case, all we want to see is if it's false, go ahead and print this out. And that particular statement doesn't evaluate to true. Now, I'm going to throw a curveball at here, and you could do something like this to say, give me the opposite of false and go ahead and run this. And the opposite of false is indeed true, so that would print out. So some other like funny situations that may come up is starting with the keyword null. So let's say we create a name variable and we don't assign anything to it. We assign null. So I'm not going to get into the whole null scenario, but null is just not a value. And so in this case, we don't have a value for name. So if we said if name uh, print line name has a value. So in this case, we're saying, all right, let's go ahead and print this out, but it's not printing out. And that's because null is going to evaluate to false. And that's really important in Groovy. So later and later when we get into like some cool things that we can do, you know, we don't have to like check for um, like null and then do something else. We can actually just like create an empty object and say, if it's null, do this, or if not, do that. So that's pretty cool. Um, if we assign it a first name here, and we go ahead and run this, then name has a value. Whoops. So that works. Then what about empty strings? So string um, last equals, and if last, I think you already know what's going to happen here, but print line last has a value. So if we just run that, nothing prints out. So just like null, empty string is treated as um, false. And you'll see this more as we get into a section on the groovy truth, which does some of these really cool things. And so this may make a little bit more sense then. Again, I just want you to get the idea of seeing this so when we see it in code, you don't, you're not confused as to what's happening. And I'm actually not going to run this, but you can do with empty collections as well. It's probably going to do the same thing. So now what I want to look at is an if or else. So 
let's uh, let's say let's say we have a number that's equal to 10 and in one scenario we want to say if X is equal to 10 now what we're going to introduce is these curly brackets here before we only had one statement so we didn't need those brackets but when we have multiple statements like this we're going to need those so we're saying if X equals actually let's um, Let's actually, no, no, all right, we'll do that. So print line x is 10, and then else print line uh, x is not 10. Okay, so if we run this right now, you probably already know what's going to happen. x is 10. So now, if we go ahead and change this, and we change x equal to 5, what do you think is going to print out? And if you set x is not 10, it's pretty straightforward. So now we've introduced an if-else control structure, and let's keep moving on from here. So now we have an if, if-else. How about a classic while loop? So well, we want to say, let's create a variable here called i equals 1. We want to say while, so while something, while this, um, this whatever executes inside of this, uh, these parentheses here, whatever this evaluates to, while this is happening, let's keep doing something. So let's say while i is less than or equal to 10, I want you to do whatever is in these curly brackets. So we're going to print line, and we're just going to print out the num. Um, oops, I'm sorry. So I want to print out i. So now, if I were to just do this, uh, I would actually get caught in an infinite loop because we actually never change the value of i. So in the first iteration, it goes while wow, 1 is less than or equal to 10, print this out. Then it comes back up and it goes while wow, 1 is less than or equal to 10, print this out. So you can see we've never changed the value of i, so in that case it would just go into an infinite loop and probably ultimately crash our program. So in this case, what I want to do is just introduce a new operator, which we're going to get to in another section, but this is just the incrementer operator, and it's going to add 1 to that value. So now if we go ahead and run this, we can see that we're printing out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 10, because we said while it's less, while it's less than or equal to, print out that number. So that's a classic while loop. How about something called a for in list? And to do this, we're going to create a quick list. So I have a list of numbers here. And what I want to say is um, 4. So 4 is our keyword. Now again, here's our expression in our parentheses, which we're going to evaluate. So we're going to say 4. Whoops, let's do this. Let's say, oh no, we want to do that. So we have four, and then we have a variable here that we're going to assign to each particular list element. So I'm going to call that num uh, for number. So I'm going to say for num in list, I want you to do something. And in this case, we're just going to print line num. And so you can imagine, probably already know what's going to happen. For each of those, we're going to print that value out. So we actually have a pretty cool thing that we can do with that. So a lot of programs you'll see kind of do something similar to this, whether it's a list or um, um, uh, a list of objects and then do something to that. There, there's always iterations happening over something. Um, and in Groovy, we'll, we have these things called closures, which we're going to get into in another section but it allows us to kind of do some operations shorthand. Um, and I, I, I'll kind of leave it at that for now, but um, we can use a closure so we can do that same list. So let's say um, list two is equal to one, two, three, four. Now, instead of looping over each of those manually uh, by using the for loop, we can say list two dot each 
and then just print line and then we'll use a special keyword there that we'll talk about later um, to make that happen as well so that's just another way to kind of loop over or iterate over a list uh, a list so the last one I want to look at is what's called a switch now the switch in groovy is really cool there's so much you can do with the switch operator and for now, we're going to keep this very basic, but later in this course, we're going to dive into the switch statement and look at all the really cool things that I can do. So let's come up with a scenario here. Let's say I have a variable called my number and it's equal to 10. But somewhere in my program, I need to do different things based on what that number is. So now based on what we know, we could do something like this. We could say if my number is equal to 1, print line my number is one right so we could do that but what if what about two well we can go ahead and probably just copy this and say if number equals two print two but as you can already see this is a lot of copy and pasting and it just doesn't it just doesn't feel right does it it, it just doesn't look right it doesn't feel right it seems kind of dirty um, and actually it is so there's actually a better way of going about these types of scenarios and it's called using a switch statement so a switch statement looks like this so we have our my number here and we use the keyword switch and in this uh, in, in these brackets uh, parentheses here we're, we're gonna look at what we want to switch on in our case, it's the uh, value or it's the variable my number. So right now that's 10, but um, it could be anything, right? So now what we can do is we can say, all right, I have a case, and the case is one of the possibilities that this number could be or this variable could be. In this case, one of my possibilities is one. And what I want to say is if it's one, I want you to go ahead and print line number is one and from there we can actually break out and we don't need to do anything else we don't need to continue because we've already found the case that we're looking for um, in this case we also can do something called a default so what if we didn't put the number one through ten and we only had ten options in here what if somebody put in a number of a hundred we need a default case to kinda like catch everything else so let's just say print line we hit the default case so that's all there is so now if we were to go ahead and run this the number is 10 we have something defined for a case of 1 but we have nothing for 10 so we should hit that default case and we do so now if we go ahead and change this number to 1 and run this again we now print out number is one. So you can see a switch statement in that type of scenario works way better than having tons of ifs and else's and nested logic sitting there like that. And like I said before, there's uh, outside of just this simple case of looking for the number one, we can do some really cool things with the switch statement in Groovy and we're definitely gonna cover that later in this course. So I hope this helped introduce you to the different types of control structures that you might come across. Again, uh, we're not, we didn't go in depth, but I hope this kind of lets you think about it when you see these throughout our examples as we start moving through the course.